It's Friday, June 12th. My name is Juan Brown. You're watching the Blanco Lirio channel, and today we're going to do a deep dive into a long awaited, long overdue 737 Max update. These updates and these videos are brought to you by the folks that support this channel over on Patreon, where we've recently introduced a new $1 per month tier that gets you early access to these videos before they're open to the general public over on YouTube. Thank you for your support. Remember this is a long series of videos here on the Blanco Lirio channel. See the playlist below. Page one. The big news is the recertification flight. The first Boeing 737 MAX recertification flight with Boeing engineers and the FAA is tentatively scheduled for the end of this month, the month of June. This recertification flight will flight test in the actual airplane all the changes that Boeing has done to the 737 MAX software regarding the MCAS, the troubled MCAS system, Maneuvering Characteristics Augmentation System. So the flight plans have been drawn up. It may be just one flight, but more likely a couple of different flights are going to put an FAA test pilot in the left seat of the 737 MAX and a Boeing company test pilot in the right seat of the 737 MAX. Before the recertification flight can go on, engineers have found another problem with the software some time ago that was resulting in erroneous stab trim failure indications in the cockpit of the 737 MAX while conducting the tests in the engineering cab. So there's a few more functionality tests that need to be successfully completed in the engineering cab, the simulator engineering cab, before the flight certification tests can move forward. Once the recertification flights are successfully completed, now the big work begins. A joint operations evaluation board has to be formed to do the final determination on what is the final training requirements going to be for the 737 MAX. And this is going to require cooperations, cooperation with the EASA, the European Union Aviation Safety Agency, and other regulators from around the world. In conjunction with the JOEB, or Joint Operations Evaluation Board, Boeing engineers on the maintenance side are also going to have to work up the series of service bulletins that are going to go forward to operators that are going to tell maintainers exactly what they need to do to rewire and reprogram their 737 MAX to get in compliance with airworthiness. Page 2. EASA, EASA, the European Union Aviation Safety Agency. Because of all the fallout of this 737 MAX, traditionally, before all this happened, the FAA would certify a US built aircraft, a Boeing built aircraft, and generally regulators around the world would adopt the FAA certification. Now that confidence in both Boeing and its relationship with the FAA has been shaken all around the world, EASA and other regulators are going to take a much more hands-on approach to the recertification of the 737 MAX. To that end, EASA has formed a ISSA, don't you love these acronyms in aviation, Integral Systems Safety Analysis Team to help evaluate the recertification of the 737 MAX. The problem is, the ISSA team from EASA is applying primarily an Airbus template to the recertification of a Boeing aircraft. It simply won't work. But there is going to be a compromise reached and the compromise is probably going to go something like this. After the 737 MAX is recertified, EASA is going to require that the 737 MAX eventually adopt synthetic airspeed similar to what Boeing has already developed into the 787 and integrate that into the 737 MAX. Synthetic airspeed was considered in the 737 MAX design all the way back in 2013 but was thrown out because the primary engineering design directive at the time was to build an aircraft that required no additional simulator training to build a new aircraft that would 
comply with the original type certificate rating for the Boeing 737 and not require an additional type certificate rating which would acquire additional simulator training. That's what got us into this whole MCAS mess to begin with. So to that end, uh, the, the concept of synthetic airspeed was not developed into the 737 MAX. Synthetic airspeed is a calculated airspeed derived from data that adds an additional level of redundancy, a third level in, of redundancy in addition to the two independent air data systems already on board the 737. It takes inertial data and FMC data and mixes it with AOA data to give you synthetic or digital airspeed. And by having this third backup, it will help alleviate erroneous airspeed or erroneous flight instrument malfunctions. The third option that EASA is proposing is the adoption of a third AOA vein on the 737 MAX. Both of these will be done after the 737 MAX has been recertified. Page 3. So about 800 or so 737 MAX aircraft have already been built. 400 of those were already out on the line and flying, and those aircraft, of course, have been subsequently grounded. In the 20 months since the accidents, another 400 or so 737 MAX aircraft have come off of the assembly line and have been parked all around Boeing, <laughs> Boeing fields all around the Pacific Northwest. This backlog of aircraft, it will take about a year just to clear the backlog of aircraft that Boeing has produced since the, uh, since the accidents. So in conjunction with all the problems of the 737 MAX, we now have the COVID-19 disaster that's hit the airline industry that's greatly slowing down airline demand. And though, air, though orders for the 737 MAX are canceling, there's still a backlog a total backlog at Boeing aircraft for 4,774 total aircraft of all types, of which the 737 MAX represents the majority of that backlog. So there's still close to 4,000 backlog order for the 737 MAX aircraft. The aircraft is coming eventually. The airlines are parking older, inefficient air airplanes and are going to be needing these newer more efficient airlines airplanes in the future so the Boeing 737 MAX is not going away however it's going to take a long time for the airlines to recover from this current COVID-19 pandemic it's going to take four to five years a quick look at the TSA numbers a year ago we were flying here just here in the United States as a barometer Two and a half to 2.6 million passengers per day were going through the turnstiles at the TSA. On the 11th of June, we broke a new record here in the U.S. with a half a million passengers flying. So that's still an 80% drop in airline flying. So even though the number of passengers are beginning to come back through the turnstiles at airports around the U.S., it's still down 80%. Now, the type of passengers that are coming back are a concern also. The number one passenger that's coming back into the airlines is the domestic passenger. Well, traditionally, the domestic passenger didn't bring a lot of revenue to the airlines. Is the, the domestic leisure traveler, I should say. The domestic leisure traveler was just bargain hunting and, and flying when it was convenient and when the price was right. But that's our number one customer coming back into the market right now. Business travelers, they're not coming back. They've discovered that they don't need to go flying to all these different meetings. They finally figured out how to do a Zoom chat without interrupting each other or talking over the top of each other. And folks are working from home more than ever. And many of those folks are, are going to continue working from home for the rest of their career. So that business flying demand is dropped way off and is not coming back into the same numbers that it ever was. And then finally, international travel. International travel is not coming back until we get a vaccine for the corona, the COVID-19 virus. So all that means that the airlines are going to be fundamentally changed as a result of this pandemic and it's going to take four to five years for these airlines to recover. So to that end, Boeing has sent a letter to Spirit Spirit Aerosystems, Spirit Aerosystems in Wichita, Kansas, builds the 
fuselages for the 737 Max. They're one of the suppliers to the Max. So though, so, so though that this sounds bad, it's just it's a delay in the game. Here's what Boeing sent to, uh, or here's what uh, Spirit says about the letter. June 10th, on June 4th. Spirit received a letter from Boeing directing Spirit to pause additional work on four 737 MAX ship, <laughs> ship sets, say that three times fast, and avoid starting production on 16 737 MAX ship sets to be delivered in 2020 until otherwise directed by Boeing. In order to support, to support Boeing's alignment of near-term delivery schedules to its customers' needs in light of COVID-19's impact on air travel and airline operations, and in order to mitigate the expenditure of potential unnecessary production costs. Based on the information of the letters, subsequent correspondence from Boeing dated on June 9, Spirit does not yet have a definitive information on what the magnitude of the reduction will be. The bottom line is that due to the matters described above, Spirit has elected to place certain Wichita hourly employees directly associated with the production work and support functions of the 737 MAX program on a 21 calendar day unpaid temporary layoff or furlough, effective 15 June. Spirit will declare an immediate reduction of the hourly workforce in Tulsa and McAllister, Oklahoma, effective Friday, June 12th. So it's having an impact on producers of the sub-assemblies to the 737 MAX all around the world. So the recovery from the economic impact of COVID-19 is going to be much longer and slower, especially here in the aviation industry, than originally anticipated. And that's the fallout that we're seeing here. So we'll, we'll keep uh, on top of this story. We'll look forward to seeing those recertification flights of the 737 MAX, and we'll be reporting on it here on the Blanco Lirio channel. Again, thanks for your support. Thanks for your support over on Patreon that makes these updates possible. See you here. Cut them trees.